Hello everybody, so today we're going to be talking about Kirchhoff's current law and voltage law. So look at the diagram, what does I equal? So we're looking at this diagram here. What we need to know is that at each one of these junctions, the same amount that goes in has to be the same amount that goes out. Okay, so when we look at this junction here, we can notice that we have five going in, two going out, which also means we need to have three going out because the same that goes out has to come in. So five went in, so five has to go out. Now, if we look at this one here, we can see three is also going in, but another one is going in. So this over here has to be positive four, okay? So we have positive four. Negative four would mean it would be the opposite direction of the arrows, but we want it to go in this direction of the arrow, so that's positive four. All right, let's look at this. Look at the diagram. What does the I equal? Again, we want to look at what this is equal to. What we know is we have 1, 4, and 3 going in, and we have negative 2 going in. So what we can do is we can change this negative 2 to be a positive 2, but then we change the arrow to go this way. Okay, so the negative just means it going the opposite way of what it looks. So let's see, we have 1, 5, 8 going in, and then we have 2 going out. So what we want is, since we have 8 going in, we also want 8 going out. So if, since we already have 2 going out, we want 6 going out. So we want 6 going the other way. So that means we need this to be a negative 6. Okay, so this should be a negative 6 because we want 6 going the opposite way of this original arrow. Okay. All right, now let's look at this last one. Look at the diagram, what does the I equal? So again, we're looking for what this I is. Again, we wanna look at each one of these junctions to help us with this. So we have four going in and six going out. What that means is we need another two going in. So that means this should be two going in here so that that equals everything. And let's look at this junction. So this is a negative three and a negative one. Let's just change these negatives to be positive because personally, they confuse me when it's negative. So I'm gonna change that, whoops. That's gonna be positive. Then I get rid of that and make this one go out like this, okay? So it's gonna be positive. And now this one, I'm gonna change this to be positive and I have this going in. So this is going in three, going out one. So that means that two more has to be going out. So we have two more that should be going out like that. Now, if we look at this, we have two going out, two going in, and that means that this one over here should just be zero. And we see that it's zero. Okay, so now let's look at the voltage law. What the voltage law is saying is whatever this battery is, in this term, uh, 15 volts, uh, whatever it is, everything else needs to add up to those 15 volts, okay? Everything that is in series needs to add up. So if everything is in series needs to add up, if we have we have five uh, going this way, and then we have three going this way, and then we have one over here, we have one, six, and nine. That means over here, this one needs to be six volts. We have positive 6 volts. It should be going from the negative to the positive, so that if it was the other way around, that would be like a negative answer. So there's negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive, going towards the positive side of the terminal of the battery. So we have 5, 3, 6, and then 1, which adds up to be 15 volts. Okay. All right, let's look at this next one. So the diagram, uh, the three resistors are connected as shown in the diagram below, solve for each of the missing variables. So what we should know is the total voltage is 12 volts. Since this is just one closed circuit, that means all of the current is gonna be same throughout the whole thing. So let's first just find what the resistance total is gonna be. We're just gonna add this up, 11 plus seven plus 20, since they're all in series. So this is gonna be 27, 38 ohms. So we know that the resistance total is 38. Now that we know what the resistance total is, we can find what the current total is, which is the same as the current all of these, again, because they're all in the same circuits. So I can do 
V total is equal to current total times resistance total, V total being 12, current total being what we're looking for, resistance total being 38. And now we can find what the total current is, 12 divided by 38, and we get 0 0.32 pretty much. 0. Point, I'm going to maybe make it 0 0.316, it's a little bit more accurate amps. Okay, and now we can fill this in here. 0 0.316, 0 0.316, 0 0.316, 0 0.316. And now that we do that, we should be able to find what the voltage is of each of these. So I'm just going to do, uh, go up here. V1 is equal to I1 times R1. Okay, V1 uh, is what we're looking for. I1, the current is the same, so 0 0.316, R1, which is 11. Now let's figure out what this is. 0 0.316 times 11, which goes 3.476. I'm going to say 3.48. So 3.48 volts. 3.48 volts. Next, we're looking for V2. V2 is equal to I2. R2. V2, I2 is equal to 0.316. R2 is equal to 7. And let's figure out what this is. 7 times 0 0.316. 2.21. 2.21 volts. Put that there, 2.21. And now let's see, we have 5, 6, uh, 5.69. So it needs to add up to 12. So if we have 5.69, this next one should be around 6.5-ish. Uh, so let's see, V3 is equal to I3, R3. Uh, V3, I3, I3 is again the same, 0.316. R3 is equal to 20. Now let's put that into our calculator. 20 times. 0.316 and we get 6.32 6.32 volts okay. 6.32 volts and if you were to add all of that up we have 3.48 plus 2.21 plus 6.32 what we get is we get 12.01 uh, because of the rounding it's not exactly 12 but if we were to round perfectly it would have been 12 all right everyone thank you for watching